Hello, love. Welcome back. I thought today we could do a little bit of a catch up. So I thought I could just, um, you know, make a cup of coffee and riff on how fall has been going and just kind of chat with you. So settle in. Let's just kind of hang out together today. Fall is in full swing in my neighborhood. It is so brilliant with so many trees. It's so gorgeous. All of those fall colors are so bright and it's really, really powerful. It's so nice to get outside and spend time without the heat and the weather's been really nice and crisp. So I've just been getting out. I've been going to the park a lot with my friends for some socially distanced activities. Like I'm in a book club and there's been a birthday where we did a little tie-dyeing. That was really fun. Just keeping it really small and simple and distanced at the park, which is gorgeous. Usually I travel a lot in the fall, um, which I did a little bit of, but usually I travel a little bit more in the fall because it's just this nice little window where it's not too hot and not too cold and not too foggy and not too crowded, which I did end up doing a little bit and I'll, I'll tell you about that. But a large portion of my fall was taken up with surgery. I had surgery uh, at the end of, was it August? Wait, gosh, that seems like so long ago. No, 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 it was at the end of September. <laughs> I'm like, what time? This year is so crazy. But anyway, um, yeah, there was a lot of lead up to it. I had some, I had a hysterectomy. I had some abnormal cells that had kind of taken over this area. So it had to be removed and everything's fine now. I'm totally in the clear and I am good, which is amazing. But there was a lot of appointments and hiccups leading up to the surgery. I was referred around a lot and there was a lot of waiting. So I've pretty much been dealing with this health scare since the beginning of the pandemic. I started the process in February <laughs> and I didn't have my hysterectomy until like the last day of September. So wow, it was a lot and doubled with the pandemic and everything like the election and stuff like that. Like I was so stressed out <laughs> this year. It was crazy. So I was really pouring myself into my classes and teaching online. So there was that, that was kind of a silver lining to keep me occupied. So <laughs> it was just wee, just so much. And I know everyone's been having similar years, but it just felt like a lot. So anyway, I recovered. And so what I did was book a vacation for when I was going to be well enough to like carry my luggage and drive the car <laughs> out of town. And so I booked a solo vacation. I just wanted to get away from everything uh, by myself and kind of tap into some me time. I voted by mail and I immediately turned around and booked a room that was right on the water. And it was a little bit more than I wanted to pay but it was really the only one available with that short of notice and it was amazing. There was a 180 degree view of the water right outside of my balcony and there were so many birds in the bay. Um, I saw there were pelicans diving all the time and they're big and make a big splashing noise when they dive. And when I got there, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I just kept walking around the studio apartment going like, oh my gosh, this is so incredible. I'm so happy. This is fantastic. After such a stressful year, I'm, I'm finally doing something for myself that's fun. So this whole room thing was kind of the jumping off point for me to make a painting class that's all about plein air painting, which is painting outside. Um, because I had this beautiful view off of the room, I could paint from my balcony and also drive up the coast and paint. It's like I wanted to get away and then I ended up booking like a work trip, but it was really fun. And plein air painting is so relaxing. So I ended up 
making a full class when I was there, which is called Plenary Like a Pro, and I'll leave more information about that at the end. So if you're interested about painting outside and doing landscapes on site, uh, definitely wait for the end. A lot of people think that you can't paint outside with acrylic paint because it dries too fast and that is absolutely not the case. If you have any interest in that, wait for the end and there will be more information. So that was just incredible. And then I kind of feel like I turned a corner with that trip. I, it's like I shed a skin a little bit. Like I came back and I felt really rejuvenated and I was just ready to let go. Like I let go of something when I was out of town. So when I got back into town, I knew like something was going to be different, but I didn't know what. <laughs> and I ended up starting a new series of portraits and I'm doing these ladies that are kind of vintage inspired. I have painted women in the past, especially in my 20s. I painted a, a lot of women and I do see a resemblance with these versus the ones I was painting back then. But I'm a, a better painter now than I was in my 20s, so it's a lot more fun. And I'm really inspired by Art Nouveau and Art Deco and Victorian styles right now. It's been fun looking at Pinterest and looking at the models and the makeup back then and the style of clothing. I've just been really inspired by these vintage themes. Back then there was really a lot of momentum to for women to get the vote and women were they ditched corsets and started dressing in pants and cutting their hair shorter and so it there's a little bit of a, a theme with women's empowerment with these paintings, but they, I do want them to be very beautiful and captivating because that time was still very styled and feminine and lovely. I don't know. There's something about them where they're, they're not just the subject, but they're also looking back. So there's a relationship there. It's more of a even ground perhaps with them and the viewer so it's not like we're just objectifying women as objects of beauty their eyes connect with you or me while I paint them and it seems like there's something a little bit deeper going on it's like we just caught them deep in thought whether they're single or professionals or mothers or suffragettes there's something alluring that's not just about beauty and I feel that when I paint it and hopefully it comes across when you view them so I'm sorry I don't have any video footage of this I kind of feel like I needed to work on this privately while it's still new so I took pictures of the different stages of the painting and how I worked on them but I didn't set up the video camera. It does inhibit me a little bit to paint on camera. I, I'm pretty darn comfortable with it, but when I'm working on something new, I just need a little bit of privacy. <laughs> As I'm sure you can identify with, I really want to explore the series and develop it in a way that um, is deep. And I'm gonna share them on my website. They will be available. So um, I'm going to be working on that for a little while, I think. But I've also been thinking forward to the new year and how 2021 is going to look. Um, I think it's, you know, a good time to review. And so I'm thinking about it. I've been journaling and writing some lists of goals. Um, so I just wanted to share my goals for 2020. I think it's important to get this out into the universe and help manifest it a little bit, either the way I see them in my mind or maybe even better. <laughs> so number one of the things I want to move towards is more travel. And I would really love to have a travel van where I could almost have like a art studio on wheels combining travel with art. Number two on my list of things I'd like to see happen is more gallery representation because I've 
been kind of holed up at home. I'm really interested in working from home and doing my thing, but also it's important for me to get out there a little bit more, I think, in real life. I really would like to find a, a nice gallery to be in on a regular basis. Not just group shows. I want gallery representation where my work is there all the time. Number three, I want to continue teaching. I love teaching. But anyway, those are some, some goals that I have. And um, I don't want to make too many because I don't want to overload my plate. I really just want to thank you for being here. And it's just nice to hang out with you and talk and not have everything planned out really perfectly for my videos. Um, just kind of more casual coffee talk kind of thing. Thank you so much. I will have more information about my latest class right after this. But for now, happy painting and much love. One of the most incredible ways to make art is painting outdoors. I always say that art is magic, but when it's paired with slowing down and spending time in a beautiful environment, it can truly help us bond with nature. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an artist and instructor, but what I really do is help people gain creative confidence. By absorbing a gorgeous setting, processing it, and painting on site, it becomes an extraordinarily holistic and fulfilling experience. In this class, Plein Air Like a Pro, How to Paint On Site in Acrylics, you will get an in-depth look at how to prepare for and enjoy a successful painting day out in the field. In the lessons, I will share with you all of my insider tips for painting en plein air, which is the French way of saying in the open air. We will cover how to pick the best site for you, the best time to go, and what to bring, whether you go out in a car, on a trail, or even out in your own backyard. I'll discuss color theory for painting in nature and palette mixing so you can feel confident when you arrive, no matter what kind of scene you're painting. Next, I'll go over eight on-site steps for creating a plein air acrylic painting. And finally, I'll talk you through my time-lapse painting sessions that I did during my trip. Now you might be thinking that you need a lot of painting experience to paint plein air, but that's not really the case. You don't have to be a great artist to enjoy painting outside. I've had all kinds of students join me on my plein air retreats. I've had beginners excel at it, and I've had experienced artists get frustrated with it, and everyone in between. The key is 95% attitude. And with plein air, things can change such as light and weather conditions. But if you show up with an open mind and a love of the outdoors, I will help prepare you for the rest. It's all about exploring and having fun. Once you practice this, you're going to start looking at the world through different eyes and your experience will help you with all of your future artwork. So are you ready to try it out? Let's go.